Today is Wednesday, May 27th, 2020, and you're listening to What Just Happened, Project Wasabi's 10-minute recap of important events from around the world. According to Johns Hopkins University, as of this morning, May 27th, 2020, just in the United States alone, so far we have lost a total of 98,929 innocent souls to coronavirus, 212 of whom just in the past 24 hours. Saturday, May 23rd, while speaking at the podium, the governor of North Dakota, 63-year-old Doug Burgum, made an impassioned plea for empathy. And that's the battle of the virus. I would really love to see in North Dakota that we could just skip this thing that other parts of the nation are going through where they're creating a, uh, a divide, either it's ideological or political or something uh, around mask versus no mask. This is a, uh, I would say, senseless uh, dividing line. Uh, and, it, and I would ask people to uh, try to dial up your empathy and your understanding. If someone is wearing a mask, uh, they're not doing it to represent what political party they're in or what candidates they support. They might be doing it because they've got a five-year-old child who's, who's been going through cancer treatments. They, m they might have vulnerable adults in their life uh, who, are, who are currently up COVID and they're fighting. And so again, I would just uh, love to see our state as part of being North Dakota smart, also be North Dakota kind, North Dakota empathetic, uh, North Dakota understanding to do this thing because if somebody wants to wear a mask, uh, there should be no mask shaming. Uh, they sh you should look at them and say, that person's wearing a mask because for them, there's additional risk in their life. The first thing that somebody ought to assume is that they're doing it because they've got people in their life that they love and that they're trying to take care of. And I, I just think, let's just start there. Acting swiftly, the city of Minneapolis has fired four of its police officers Tuesday morning for apparently causing the death of a 40-something African-American man while detained in police custody. On Monday, May 26 at 8.33 p.m., moments before his death, George Floyd and two passengers are pulled over by two uniformed 30-something cops, both wearing light blue work shirt and badge over dark blue polyester slacks. The driver, George Floyd, is handcuffed and made to sit on the sidewalk with his back against the wall. Arriving three minutes later, two more uniformed cops exit their vehicle wearing black gloves, unlike the first two cops who initially made the stop to work barehanded. At 8.40 p.m. Minneapolis time, a disturbing cell phone video taken by Darnella Frazier shows the suspect is now face down on the ground. A short, Asian-American uniformed police officer holds back concerned onlookers as his fellow officer, a 40-something Caucasian cop, is pressing his left knee down into the neck of the restrained African-American George Floyd, who is pinned down and unable to move, the left side of his face pressed painfully into the asphalt. This unarmed, defenseless man lay slowly dying. The last thing he'll ever see is the right rear tire of a police black-and-white squad car. In the video, George Floyd can be heard choking, gasping for air, desperately pleading for his life, repeatedly saying he cannot breathe. Bystanders now begging officers to allow Floyd his precious breath. Editors note, at this point, the suspect's body is completely immobile and physically disabled by police. Thus, George Floyd is no threat to officers and bystanders. Mayor of Minneapolis, Jacob Fry. When you hear someone calling for help, you are supposed to help. This officer failed in the most basic human sense. It seems to this podcaster, if officers were so worried about their own personal safety, George Floyd was already handcuffed. All they needed to do is get him in the car. Also, besides strangling the victim, judging by the position of his left knee, it appears the Caucasian officer is trying to stop blood flow to the victim's carotid artery. Cops can be heard taunting George Floyd, sarcastically telling him to get up and get in the car. According to police, George Floyd died at the hospital a short time later and no weapons were used by Floyd or officers. 
more as this story develops. Many people are taking precautions to protect against the spread of coronavirus, though many are not. I'm just here just to have fun and meet everybody. And just... Despite warnings from the medical and science communities, scores of festive people without masks are flooding to beaches and parks, very often in tight-knit groups ignoring social distancing protocols. Donald Trump continues his dismissive rhetoric, actively discouraging people from safe health practices. This is voluntary. I don't think I'm going to be doing it. I just don't want to be doing, I don't know, somehow sitting in the Oval Office behind that beautiful Resolute desk. The great Resolute desk, I think, uh, wearing a face mask as I greet presidents, prime ministers, dictators, kings, queens. I don't know. Somehow, I don't see it for myself. I just, I just don't. Uh... And Trump supporters enthusiastically follow their leader. My family has the same mindset as me, and um, uh, we kind of just agreed that uh, if we get it, we get it. Um, we're going to handle it as a family and just get over it, because that's what a family does. This 50-something beachgoer was asked if he wears a mask. No, my wife and kids do. I don't. How come you don't? I just feel comfortable that I'm going to be okay. But the mask isn't to keep you okay, it's to keep your wife and kids okay. To protect them. I get it, I get it. Uh, the survival rate is so high, I think... You're not worried about them getting sick because I am, they're going to live. I, I, we're all going to get sick for something eventually. A bare-chested young 20-something guy wearing a baseball cap. I mean, if he's not wearing a mask, I'm not going to wear a mask. If he's not worried, I'm not worried. The president. Yes, sir. Donald Trump criticizes Joe Biden for wearing a mask. Biden can wear a mask, but he was standing uh, outside with his wife, perfect conditions, perfect weather. They're inside, they don't wear masks, and so I thought it was very unusual that he had one on. He's a fool. Likely presidential candidate Joe Biden shares his view. An absolute fool to talk that way. I mean, every leading doc in the world is saying we should wear a mask when you're in a crowd. But um, it's just absolutely this, this macho stuff for, for a guy, well, I shouldn't get going, but it, it, it just is, it, it's cost people's lives. 100,000 people. Columbia studies showing that if you just started a, a week earlier, it would have saved thousands of lives. I mean, this is a tragedy and it's stoking deaths. Presidents are supposed to lead, not engage in folly and be falsely masculine. It reminds me of the guys that I grew up with playing ball. They'd walk around with a ball in their hand, but they didn't like to hit very much. In Georgia, the Ahmad Arbery murder is currently under investigation by the state-run Georgia Bureau of Investigation. A third suspect whose name has come to light, William Roddy Bryan, is being held on charges of felony murder and criminal attempt to commit false imprisonment. Earlier this year on that tragic day, the suspect William Roddy Bryan took that infamous 28 second viral cell phone footage that shows his accomplices hunt down and kill the African American runner back on Sunday, February 23rd, 2020. The first two suspects arrested, Gregory and Travis McMichael, the father and son who were seen on video lynching runner Ahmad Arbery, were each charged on Thursday, May 7th with murder and aggravated assault. Questions surround local authorities as to why the arrest was made two weeks after the incident. According to the Arbery family's attorney, the Department of Justice and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation are investigating this as a hate crime because it was based on prejudice against color. Named after the county where this incident happened, Clayton Daily News says the police report shows Gregory McMichael, who was in the flatbed of the pickup during the shooting, told police that the third suspect, William Roddy Bryan, had used his own vehicle multiple times to try and confine and detain Ahmad Arbery. To repeat, one suspect, Gregory McMichael, told police, To my layman's ear, it sounds like 64-year-old Gregory McMichael may have entered into a plea agreement and is now cooperating with law enforcement authorities. More as this story develops. And Metro LA weather is sunny and warm for the foreseeable future. Today's temps in the mid-80s, then tomorrow slightly cooler, adds that a subsequent cooling trend, and with any luck, LA temperatures by Friday could dip into the mid-70s. On a lighter note, Rabbi Shlomo Riskin celebrates his 80th birthday. 
singer-songwriter Gladys Knight turned 76, and John Fogarty, founder and lead singer of Creedence Clearwater Revival, turned 75. And to these good people who bring such joy, Project Wasabi wishes a happy birthday. Oh, Rudy Giuliani turned 76. You've been listening to What Just Happened, Project Wasabi's audible recap of significant events from around the world. On behalf of Project Wasabi, this is Brian Newberry saying thanks for listening and we'll talk to you soon.